In July 202 AD, with the support of Pang Ji, Shen Pei, and others, Yuan Shang officially inherited Yuan Xia's official title, the General-in-Chief, Governor of Jizhou, and the Marquis of Ye. After arriving in Ye Chang, Yuan Tan saw that Yuan Shang had already ascended to the throne and felt indignant in his heart, so he named himself the General of Chariots and Cavalry. Yuan Shang subsequently dispatched Yuan Tan to station troops in Li Yang. Li Yang is the gateway of Jizhou, with a very important position, but Yuan Shang only allocated a small number of soldiers to his big brother. Yuan Tan requested more soldiers from Yuan Shang, but Yuan Shang not only refused, but also sent Pang Ji to be the military inspector in a fit of anger. Yuan Tan killed Pang Ji, making the conflict between the two brothers even more irreconcilable. In September of the same year, Cao Cao took the opportunity to lead his troops northward to attack Li Yang. After Yuan Tan's defeat, he retreated to hold the city and once again requested reinforcements from Yuan Shang. Yuan Shang knew the importance of Li Yang, but was afraid that Yuan Tan would not return it after receiving the soldiers, so he left Shen Pei to guard Ye Chang, while himself personally led the army to rescue. At that time, Chan Yu, Hu Chu Chuan, a leader of the southern Xiong Nu, rebelled in Ping Yang. Cao Cao ordered Zhong Yao, the governor of Suzhou, stationed in Chang'ang, to lead his troops to surround Ping Yang, but he couldn't capture the city after attacking for a long time. In order to contain the Cao army, Yuan Shang appointed Guo Yuan, the nephew of Zhong Yao, as the governor of her Dong commandery, letting Guo Yuan with Gao Gan, the governor of Bingzhou, jointly attack Zhong Yao with Ma Tang and Han Sui, who were in control of Guangzhou. After arriving in her Dong commandery, Gua Yuan and Gao Gan immediately headed north with a strong momentum and invincible attacks. However, when they reached Jiang Yi, they were met with stubborn resistance from the magistrate of Jiang Yi County, Jia Kui. Just as the city was about to be conquered, the people of Jiang Yi chose to surrender voluntarily to avoid being slaughtered, but the prerequisite was that Jia Kui could not be killed. After entering the city, Gua Yuan immediately changed his mind and ordered Jia Kui to be executed on the spot. When the people of Jiang Yi heard the news, they stood on the rampart and shouted that, we would rather die together. They cried resounded to the skies, even the generals under Gua Yuan were moved and pleaded for mercy for Jia Kui. Gua Yuan had no choice that he had to put Jia Kui in prison temporarily, and Jia Kui subsequently escaped with the help of the guards. Jia Kui's defense in Jiang Yi delayed the marching speed of Gua Yuan and others, giving Zhong Yao valuable time to manage. Zhong Yao understood his nephew Gua Yuan's character of being both underestimating and competitive, so he led his army to station on the opposite bank of the Fen River, preparing to take advantage to attack when Gua Yuan crossed of the river halfway. He also sent Zhang Ji, the magistrate of Xinfeng County, and Fu Gan, the governor of Fu Feng, to persuade Ma Tang. Under their persuasion, Ma Tang not only gave up the idea of rebellion, but also sent his son Ma Chao and more than 10,000 people to help Zhong Yao. Ma Chao was valiant, and the combat style of the Shi Liang soldiers were very fierce. Their joining played a decisive role in South's ultimate victory on the Western Front battlefield. After arriving in Pingyang, Gua Yuan easily ordered to cross the river, and everyone tried to dissuade him, but Gua Yuan refused to listen. Before crossing to the center of the river, Zhong Yao commanded the entire army to launch an attack. At that time, Arrows rained down like rain, but Ma Chao rushed to the front, causing his foot to be hit by the arrow and injured. Ma Chao reluctantly pulled out the arrow, wrapped it in a cloth strip, and continued to charge, finally defeating the enemy. Pang De, a fierce general under Ma Chao, personally killed Gua Yuan. The Chan Yu, Hu Chu Chuan surrendered, while Gao Gan led the remaining troops back to Bingzhou. After the battle, Everyone did not know that the chief commander of the enemy had died, and speculated about where was Gua Yuan. Pang De didn't know Gua Yuan either. 
After returning, he took off a head hanging from his belt and said, Take a look, is it him? Zhong Yao identified it, he found out that it was Gua Yuan's head. Zhong Yao then hugged his head and burst into tears. Pang Der apologized to Zhong Yao, who replied, Although Gua Yuan is my nephew, he is ultimately a traitor. Why do you need to apologize? The good news came, and Cao Cao was overjoyed. He appointed Pang Der as the general of the household, Marquis of Du Ting Village, Ma Tang as the general of conquering the south, and Han Sui as the general of conquering the west. Ma Chao was appointed as the governor of Xu Zhou, but he refused to go to take his post. After Cao's army complete victory on the western front, the situation on the eastern front became increasingly clear, because Yuan Tan and Yuan Shang combined were not match for Cao Cao. In March 203 AD, Li Yang was captured, Yuan Tan and Yuan Shang retreated to Ye Cheng. Cao Cao led his troops to pursue them. Just as Cao Cao was about to attack Ye Cheng with all his might, Gua Jia strongly opposed public opinion and suggested retreating. He believed that Yuan Tan and Yuan Shang were at odds and had comparable strength, both having their own followers. If we were to launch a strong attack at this time, it would force them to unite and resist. If we temporarily withdraw our troops, under the instigation of Gua Tu and others, the two will soon fall out. When we turn north again, we can pacify the north by one shot. Cao Cao adopted Gua Jie's strategy and harvested the wheat fields near Ye Cheng before returning to Xu Du. It has been proven that Gua Jie's strategy is indeed the optimal choice. He can grasp the key points first, see through the essence of things and people's hearts at a glance, truly deserving of being the number one psychological counselor in the three kingdoms. And when Cao Cao's morale was high, and he was approaching success, he could still remain calm and adopt this strategy of watching the fire from the shore, which was actually even more rare. Even though Cao Cao's own strategy is not inferior to any one of his time, we rarely see words like, Tsao Tsao did not listen, Tsao Tsao did not accept, when flipping through history books. And what about Yuan Shang? Before the war, he was still considering whether Yuan Tan would return his troops after winning, isn't it funny? In the face of such humble, calm, and high-level opponents, no matter what his family background is, no matter how many soldiers there are, all of them are useless.